glad to have you join us on today's edition of Business Incorporated. Thank you so much. I am Bolaji Akinwale. Coming up, Apple reports third quarter drop in sales and revenues. Australian shares led widespread losses in Asia Pacific on Wednesday. Plus, the fourth OTC FX futures contract at the FMDQ is to be settled today. Okay, let's begin with uh, the story around the VW emission scandal where a U.S. judge has approved the record $14.7 billion settlements Volkswagen uh, will pay in the country over its diesel emission scandal. Under the settlement, the German car maker agreed to spend up to $10 billion on buybacks and owner compensation. An additional $4.7 billion is to go to programs to offset excess emissions and to clean car project. The deal was agreed in June after regulators discovered VW software designed to cheat emissions tests. Vehicle owners will be able to choose between having the car bought back at pre-scandal trade-in value or having VW repairing the cars if regulators approve the fixes. They will also receive an additional compensation of between $5,000 and $10,000, depending on how old the vehicles are. A UK regulator of Calm has fined Vodafone £4.6 million for what it calls serious breaches of consumer protection rules. The regulator said that Vodafone had misled pay-as-you-go customers, charging them for top-up credit but providing nothing in return. It also found that Vodafone had broken the rules and handling customer complaints. Vodafone offered its profound apologies for the failure, saying that it was determined to put everything right. The fine steps uh, stems from two earlier investigations into Vodafone, which has 20 million mobile customers in the United Kingdom. And Apple has reported its third quarter in a row of falling iPhone sales and revenue, but sales beat analyst expectations. The tech giant sold 45.5 million iPhones in the third quarter, beating an average estimate of 44.8 million. The company also forecast higher holiday season revenue of between $76 billion and $78 billion. Revenue in the fourth quarter fell 9% to $46.85 billion. The numbers show that annual revenue fell for the first time since 2001, highlighting a slowdown in the smartphone markets as well as intensifying competition, particularly from Chinese rivals. And now let's take you to the equities market. We're starting from Asia, where Australian shares led widespread losses in Asia Pacific on Wednesday, with shares of Ardent Leisure, operator of Dreamworld theme park, tumbling 14.89% to two Australian dollars a share after four people were killed due to a malfunctioned ride on Tuesday. The ASX 200 fell 1.53% to 5,359.80. The energy sector tumbled 2.47% on the back of lower oil prices, while the heavily weighted financial sector was off 1.32%. The country's so-called big four banks fell near uh, or more than 1% each. Shares in ANZ, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, Westpac and the National Australia Bank we're down. And in Europe, stocks were lower following lackluster trade on Wall Street and in Asia amid a slide in oil price. Let's now bring in our this point, Conrad Busen, who is DWTV financial correspondent and he joins me from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Conrad, thank you for your time. Now, bank earnings are still trickling in. Some of the latest results show a mix of profit and loss. Spain, Santander, Nordia and Lloyd's Banking Group are some of the latest in the market. Tell us how the numbers look like. Well, Bulaji, the short answer is uh, Santander and Nordia like this, Lloyd's like this. 
Um, of course, all three banks are very, very different. They're all operating in very different markets. So it's not easy to really answer your question uh, uh, shortly. But let me try. Nordea, the largest bank in Scandinavia in the north of Europe, came in with ve very solid uh, earnings. And what's very important to note is the very broad capital basis that Nordea can operate from. The tier one capital ratio, that's the technical term for uh, the capital basis of a bank. At Nordea, it uh, has been increased to 17.9 percent. Compare this to Deutsche Bank, the riskiest bank here in Germany. It only has a tier one capital ratio of 12 percent. So Nordea, uh, those numbers came in well and uh, the bank is standing there very solidly. The two other banks, Santander, and uh, Lloyds, they have in common that they both have very much business in the UK. And here the positive thing about the earnings report is that the after Brexit referendum jitters haven't really uh, been a problem for the banking business. Uh, the, the numbers came in solid despite you know, nervousness, nervousness, nervousness among uh, consumers and also mortgage clients in the UK. Lloyds, like this a little bit, the numbers uh, uh, looked quite okay, but uh, Lloyds informed that it had to set aside an extra billion uh, British pounds for legal cases. You know, Lloyds over years had uh, misled uh, and, and, and mishandled customers by selling them uh, insurance policies they didn't need. Uh, and in order to settle all those cases, Lloyds has now set as um, aside the total amount of 17 billion British pounds. Quite a huge sum there. Now, regulatory authorities in the UK and the US are wielding the big stick against some companies in, in the case of uh, Vodafone, like I mentioned earlier on, and also Volkswagen. How are these actions impacting on the stocks? Well, both uh, cases, Volkswagen and Vodafone, can be compared because both companies sort of mistreated their customers. But apart from that, they're very, very different. The settlement of Volkswagen in uh, the United States can amount to up to 15 billion U.S. dollars. And it's only the first step of a large amount of settlement of legal cases. There are still many legal cases against Volkswagen in this emissions uh, cheating scandal open. So uh, this is going to cost much more than those 15 billion uh, dollars that Volkswagen settled on in the U.S. now. And that's why the share price also is not really on the upside. On the contrary, uh, Volkswagen's shares today are among the big DAX losers. On the other hand, Vodafone for this uh, you know, mishandling of clients in the UK is uh, only paying an amount of 4.6 million pounds. That's a lot of money for you and me, but for Vodafone and for, uh, from the point of view of investors, that's not really a large amount. And that's why uh, the share price of Vodafone has not really come under pressure because of that fine. Okay, just before I let you go, Conrad, what is the outlook for the rest of the week? It's the midweek trade today. How uh, do you think the market, are we expecting any other data, any economic news? Lots of data, lots of earnings reports. Tomorrow, for example, Deutsche Bank coming out to the market with their third quarter earnings. That's expected with great suspense here, especially in Frankfurt. We've got a lot of, earn of, of, of um, uh, economic data. I think that the third quarter GDP, the gross domestic product from the UK, uh, which will be out tomorrow, and uh, the United States uh, gross domestic product for the third quarter, which will be published on Friday, will be data widely watched on the financial markets, and they will probably have a great influence on whether or not, you know, also the German uh, share index DAX will uh, move a little bit uh, towards the end of the trading week. All right, thank you so much, Conrad uh, Busser, DWTV Financial Correspondent, uh, reaching us from Frankfurt. Now, oil fell for a third day on Wednesday, nearing $50 per barrel for the first time in three weeks, as investors grew increasingly doubtful that OPEC members will agree to cut output, and as U.S. inventories staged a surprisingly large increase. Iraq, the second largest member of OPEC, does not want to join in with a proposed production cut that the group 
has said it will approve at a regular meeting in Vienna next month. Still talking the oil market. So looking at the downstream oil and gas sector in Nigeria now, since the last quarter of 2015, Nigeria has witnessed three major divestments in the downstream space. In 2015, a Wanda PLC sold majority stake in its downstream business to a partnership between oil trader Vitol and private equity firm Elios Investment Partners for a total consideration of $461 million. In October of the same year, oil trader Mercuria also acquired a 17% stake in Nigerian downstream operator Photo Oil for $200 million. While in October of this year, another downstream operator, Nipco, acquired the downstream business of Mobile in Nigeria. Uh, there are indications that French oil major Tatami also be considering divesting from its downstream business in the country. Let's get more perspectives to this issue of divestment. We have joining us on the program, Kola Karimi, who is the chief executive of Shoreline Energy, and he joins me to discuss uh, this issue in the oil and gas sector. Kola, thank you so much for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Now, what do you make of this divestment in the downstream oil sector in Nigeria? I think it's a good thing. Um, one of the important things is different reasons for some of this interest in uh, If you look at what happened with Exxon as an example, their position has been known to right size the portfolio and in the Africa and downstream. But that's their thing. Um, if you look at strategic investment as a career and one each of the that's a transaction in looking at the Nigeria's economy and the age of import market strategic Okay, we'll hope to fix that audio uh, problem as we try to reconnect with uh, Kola Karim with um, Kola Karim, who is the CEO of Shoreline Energy, talking about the downstream oil sector in Nigeria. Now, the world's biggest car maker, Toyota, is recalling another 5.8 million cars worldwide over potentially faulty airbags made by its supplier, Takata. The models include the Corolla and the Yaris subcompact models, most of them sold in Japan, China and Europe. The cars affected were produced between May 2000 and November 2001 and between April of 20, 2006 and December 2014. Toyota said it was calling back 1.47 million airbags in cars sold in Europe, 1.16 million in Japan, 820,000 in China and 2.35 million in other regions ex excluding the United States. Now, Total's recall on Wednesday brings its total of record Takata airbags to 23.1 million. And so far, a total of 12 car makers have had to recall vehicles because of 40 Takata airbags, with the total number of recalls expected to exceed 100 million cars. Okay, we'll go on a break now, and when we we'll return on Business Incorporated, we'll be taking you through developments at the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange. Please stay with us. <laughs> 